Hello and welcome to Justin Star Photography. I'm Justin Star, and today I wanted to try something a little bit different. I'm calling it Bug Stories. If you've been to my channel before, you've seen I have a few videos of bugs around my house just existing. And they all kind of have the same format. Start with a wide shot, zoom in a little bit more, zoom in a little bit more, zoom in a little bit more until we ultimately get up to the macro view or as close to macro as I could get without disturbing the bugs. And they're nice, they're pretty, they're aesthetically pleasing, they're short, they have music underscoring them. But sometimes what's really exciting isn't just the bug itself, it's also the experience of seeing the bug. Maybe it's one you've been looking for for a long time and you finally came across it. Maybe it's a brand new one that caught you by surprise and you were just so excited to learn about it. So I'm trying a more narrative, story-like form that will tell you about the experience of seeing it, uh, that will go along with the photos and videos, and maybe you'll even learn something from it. So in this first bug story, I want to tell you about my first encounter with the Philopalpus pulchellus, or handsome trig. So back in the beginning of August, I went outside onto my deck, and I saw this weird thing that was walking on the wall outside my house. And the first thing that caught my eyes were these palps these little appendages towards the front of its body that were just waving about crazily. And when I think of palps, the first thing I think of are arachnids, or spiders. Hashtag Team Spiders. Now spiders, they have eight legs, and then they also have these little appendages in the very front called the pedipalps. And these are used for a variety of functions such as manipulating food when they're eating it, uh, or also for reproductive purposes as the hilarious and informative and very talented Twitter account She's Got Legs once referred to them as hands, and that will never not be funny to me. <laughs> anyway, so I see these palps just waving about frantically and I'm thinking, what the heck kind of spider is this? And then it took me a few seconds to take in other information and realize it wasn't a spider at all. Spiders don't have antennae, for example. Uh, this critter only had six legs, not the requisite eight. And two of the legs in the back were very obvious jumping type of cricket legs. I go back into the house, I get my DSLR macro rig that I use for shooting. And when I came back out, it wasn't where I left it. So after a little bit of searching, I found it on one of the inbuilt benches of my deck. And it was inspecting this, well, I don't know what it was, piece of wood maybe, or who knows. I find all sorts of random junk on my deck, all sorts of detritus like this half-eaten stink bug, or whatever this dead decapitated thing is. Uh, and one time I even found a peanut, which I'm guessing a bird took from a feeder and dropped it, fell from the sky. I got footage of ants utterly dismantling that thing, which was really cool. But that's a story for another day. So I take pictures, I take videos of this thing, and I do an internet search like I always do afterwards, and I find out that it is a bush cricket, a red-headed bush cricket, a handsome trig. thing has a lot of names. A Philopalpus pulchellus. Philo, meaning leaf or leaf-like, Palpus, referring to the maxillary palps, and then pukelis, meaning pretty or beautiful in a diminutive form, if I remember correctly. So it's basically a pretty little leaf-like palps. That's its scientific name, which I think is just very fitting, if you ask me. I posted pictures on Twitter and got some nice comments from a variety of people, and one of them, my friend Jen, said, nice, I think they get much prettier as they mature. I have a photo of one that looks like a beautiful jewel. And I thought, wow, that's really exciting. Uh, I hope I actually get to see this. I hope I see these creatures again. I mean, I already thought it was beautiful now. Look at these beautiful light blues and reds and the eyes are so stunning. Uh, this creature is a female. You can tell by that spear-like appendage coming out its backside. That's its ovipositor. And so I was hopeful. I was hopeful that I would see these again in the future. And in a few weeks, oh boy, did I see them. Uh, they became plentiful in the bushes around my house, uh, uh, crawling along my front deck. It was wonderful. And Jen was not wrong. Look at these 
blood reds and how the eyes darkened and how the blues became so dark and saturated. They really were wonderful. And the song they play, their mating song. Check out this iPhone video of one that was on the ceiling of my deck. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, for whatever reason, the video to me is louder than I remember the actual experience of hearing it with my own ears in person, but still, they are plenty loud. And there were many of them. Like in this one photo here, how many do you see? It's like an episode of Dora the Explorer. Yeah, five in this one shot. Males and females. Look at this male's beautiful wings specialized for playing its love song. And even though we can tell that it's a male by the wings, we can also see, if we look carefully, that it does not have the spear coming out of its backside. It does not have an ovipositor. One thing that was really cool that I learned before I actually saw this cricket at all, I believe this was from uh, the Twitter account Cybugs, S-C-I-B-U-G-S, Science Bugs, Cybugs, is that a variety of orthopterans crickets, grasshoppers, katydids, have ears in their legs. Yeah, you heard that right. They have ears in their legs. More specifically, in their two front legs, right in the tibia, they have tympanum, eardrums, just like we have. Talk about convergent evolution, like a very similar style of hearing mechanism to ours. If you look at this drumming Katie did that was on the pergola on my deck, we can zoom in and we can see the tympanum in the tibia. So now we have leg ears and hands. <laughs> that will never not be funny to me. This may be species dependent, but I recently learned that they can hear around two to three kilohertz up to eight, nine, maybe even 10 kilohertz. For some species, this was estimated to be finely tuned for the range in which the males are doing their song, but other research shows that this actually extends beyond the range of their song and may be used to detect a uh, sonic location from bats that might eat them or something. But that aside, this made it really interesting to then go back and see one of the clips that I recorded of this cricket. In the background, you can hear my dog making a very high-pitched, frustrated bark because he felt he was being neglected while I was busy focused on this beautiful little creature. And you can clearly see that the cricket is reacting to the sound of my dog's bark. Now, just to be clear, it's not like my dog was right next to the cricket. He was a good distance away. So it wasn't a matter of proximity. I think it was really just the sound. And you can see how, especially in the very last bark, the cricket jumps back with surprise at the sound of the bark. You know, I moved into this house in January of 2016, and it wasn't for like at least another two years where I really started to pay attention and care about the insect and arachnid world. And it's just crazy to think that these things were always there, or I must assume they were always there, but I was just never aware of them. I never stopped to look and take in the world around me at the smallest levels. It's incredible what you will find if you just stop and look, let your eyes adjust, look at the little details. So that's it for this episode. I hope to have more stories about bug encounters in the future. Um, have you ever seen one of these crickets? And what do you call them? Red-headed bush cricket, bush cricket, handsome trig, something else? Let me know in the comments below. This is Justin Starr of Justin Starr Photography. 
Thanks for watching.